What does every superhero have in common? They all have some form of kryptonite. And what do all forms of kryptonite have in common? They all have to do with something deeply personal to you. This video is about identifying your kryptonite and then sealing up those holes so that you're no longer susceptible to it. This new moon takes place in Uttara Ashada. Uttara Ashada means ultimate victory. It also means delayed victory. We're always looking to the future. And it's not about what the gratification will be today. It's always about what we are working toward. Uttara Ashada is ruled by the sun. The sun being our ultimate expression in the world. The way that we shine, the way that we show up in the world. And the difficulty with pursuing a spiritual path which doesn't necessarily yield any worldly benefits is how do you really know that you're on the right track? And how do you know that you're doing what you should be doing? Do they see your peace? When others watch you, do they see your fine form? Or when others watch you, do they see your temper? The only way to know is how you live. So let's do a little recap. How is that full moon in Ardra for you? After the sets of eclipses, the things that you were exposed to, the secrets that came out, and then there comes the Ardra full moon, which is a storm. If you're feeling shell-shocked, that seems natural. It's one change after another after another. It's like um, emotional muscle memory. Did you get the lesson yet? 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 So by this last time, in the last couple weeks, it wasn't even the feeling like a fight. It was that feeling about after, after you've been fighting for a week, and after you've cried all night, and after you've been up for six days straight, you've got nothing left. And so you just sit there, no energy, dazed, nothing left. The bad part of that is that you just went through it. And then the good part of that is you've got no energy to re-enter that. Whatever situations you were dealing with, whatever people you were dealing with, whatever relationships you were dealing with, it's now so clear to you where you stand and how you are regarded in that situation, how you are regarded by those people, what you are bringing to that relationship versus what they were bringing to that relationship. You can't see it other than what it is now. This is another element of Uttara Ashada. You've been stripping away elements to see things more clearly. And now that you see them more clearly, Uttara Ashada is about implementing these changes. So whatever doesn't belong, it doesn't take up room anymore. This is the same thing what Pluto and Capricorn is doing. Whatever those structures were, Capricorn, Pluto is cleaning them out for you. And the reason this feels painful is because of how we were attached to these relationships, how we were attached to these situations, how we were attached to these people. What we thought these relationships should do for us how we thought these people should come through for us, whatever the label was, their association, their friend, their family, their elected official, at whatever level. What we are always fighting is the reality of what is versus the perception that we so dearly want to hold on to about what is. And the nakshatra is about being able to perceive things clearly. So we are using our senses and we are using the data available to us so that we see things clearly. When you cast this chart, the majority of planets are in the fourth house. And fourth house has to do with your foundations. That is your sense of home, where you've come from, your roots, the base of you, family, mother, where you live, as in like place of origin, where you're from. So let's revisit this example of Martin Luther King Jr. sitting in the Birmingham jail. So while his mind is expanding, and while there was something really positive that came from that, do you imagine that he didn't also have really negative things coming at him too? Do you imagine that there weren't people in his life who were constantly questioning him, who were asking him things like, what are the odds that you will ever succeed? You're up against something that is completely insurmountable. Do you think you're so important? You do see you're in jail, right? Is this really going how you thought it was going to go? How many of you listening have ever heard things like that about your life and about your path? Now, the interesting part, go back to the superheroes. It's not Spider-Man's inability to be Spider-Man. It's not Superman's inability to be Superman. And I, I don't really know superheroes that well. But the point, their powers are intact. 
they're never the problem. The problems occur when they have these little nudges or they have these little wedges. And it always has to do with home and where they've come from and all these weird little psychological problems that vex them. They're always so deeply personal. And that's why in X-Men, they had the Origins movie. You always have to understand the roots. You always have to understand the pain of somebody to understand where they come. And it's like this with spiritual evolution as well. It's, we do turn our lead into gold. But let that also show you the vulnerability of the people closest to us and the things that are invisible to us because they're so normal, because they're what we've grown up with. Those things have such an ability to impede us. That's why the rest of this video is about the business of home. We think about our business as our business. We set up policies for our business. We educate ourselves on how to progress in our business. This is all very normal. When it comes to our home life, however, we imagine everything's supposed to be organic. And rarely do people assign the same type of discipline and regimen to their home life. In the field of conflict resolution, I hear this all the time, that communication is just something that happens organically. And I'll tell you, there can't be a more false thing said. If you have healthy communication with somebody, it's because you have boundaries. It's because you have elements of respect. It's because you have consistency in how you communicate with one another. It's not because you're stepping into something and you're devalued, you're not appreciated, you're not allowed to be yourself, you don't know what you're getting every time. So just as we assign some type of ritual, some type of parameters to our spiritual practices, so must we do so for what our sense of home is. So must we do so for where our comfort comes from. The two major energies we're dealing here are Saturn, Pluto, and then Mars, Uranus. Saturn and Pluto have in common that they don't know your family. They don't know your political affiliation. They don't know your coworkers. They don't know your friends. They don't care. They want to see that the bills are getting paid. The ascendant in this chart is Virgo. Virgo just wants to see that the numbers add up. It's nice that you like them. That's fine. They need to see that the numbers add up. Capricorn, Saturn, needs to see that everything is in order and that everything has its place. And Pluto is here to transform, get rid of, release, or rot away whatever's not supposed to be there. The second major energy, Mars and Uranus. So Mars, the planet of drive, ambition, fighting, military army, sex, and Uranus, the planet of innovation, lightning, internet, reconciling things that are needing reconciled quickly. So you have the planet of strength with the lightning planet. Both of them not waiting around to see what happens. Both of them, uh, they're the opposite of Saturn and Pluto. Saturn and Pluto are trying to make sure everything is just so. Everything that belongs is present and everything that doesn't belong is gone. Mars and Uranus are about action and about action yesterday. Let's keep talking about Pluto for a minute. This isn't the Pluto card, but I just, I like it. Check out the figures on the card, right? You have the specter behind them. You have this face peering out at you. This is your past. This is your trauma. This is everything hidden. This is your shadow. These are your corners. These are the things that you never want to come to light. And you do your best to stuff them in the dark closet and never have them emerge. You see the figures? The figures aren't bloodied. They're not suffering. They're standing there lightly. They have chains around their neck, you see. But you also get the sense that at any point they could lift the chain and be done. Here's the choice with Pluto. Pluto is transformation. Nobody makes you do it. It's up to you. And if you're on a spiritual path, and if you're looking to be something better than what you are now, in terms of what your soul evolution is, you will transform. You choose to transform. Even when it hurts, you choose to transform. This is not a choice that everybody else makes. And this is not a choice that's popular with people who aren't making that choice. As an energy, Pluto is intense control. It represents your fears, it represents your traumas, it represents all of those things that happened in the past that haunt you today. All of those things, all of those voices that tell you that you're not enough. Do you really know what you're doing? Who are you to take on this work? Who are you to say what you have to say? Who are you to be better than us? In the spiritual community, there are really clever remedies to talk about everything except 
what you need to talk about. Everybody wants to know all of these deep-seated psychological traumas. I've seen all of these modalities. If you want to really solve the mystery, watch how your family talks to you. Watch how you talk to yourself. Observe how you step into a situation and allow others to find themselves superior to you or how you find yourself superior to others. Would their life be better if they just did what you do or what you want them to do? That's not acceptance. That's its own form of judgment. The keys to your transformation lie in the everyday. They lie in your patterns. They lie in your behaviors. They lie in your relationships. They lie in your language. They lie in your activities. This is where your transformation comes from. Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This new moon and also the Saturn-Pluto aspect are taking place in your fifth house. Your fifth house has to do with your creativity, your fun. It has to do with children, with investments, with books, things that you create and things that you enjoy creating. Now, in the context of your spiritual path, what you bring into fruition is particularly important. You have your choice what you can do. People spend their time creating sex toys, fifth house. Um, so people, people spend their time in uh, hookups, love affairs, fifth house. People also find creative ways to explain alchemy, astrology, to find clever ways to unite with people. How you use your creativity is instrumental to your spiritual growth. And that's what you're going to be asked to look at now. So you have on your side the Vishvadevas, which are all of the gods. So everybody who couldn't be in favor of you is in favor of you in this creation. So what you create, you have all of this energy behind you. So now with whatever structures you've set up, now Pluto is asking you to transform those and to make sure that your efforts are geared toward a higher purpose. So whatever you were doing before, whatever doesn't belong on your spiritual path any longer, whoever was working with you, for example, or if you take investments from people and you need to make certain adjustments, sacrifices, things that lessen what you do, Pluto will ask you to have a look at that now. So with this new moon, it is the path of ultimate victory. You are assured victory. Whatever you are doing in your spiritual growth, you will get there. But attention right now needs paid to make sure your form is good and what belongs is present and what doesn't belong is not present. You have the Mars Uranus aspect in your ninth house. Your ninth house is your expansion. It's your growth, travel, maybe you're not going to be traveling so much, religion, higher learning, all of the ways that the mind gets bigger. So it's interesting that you are being asked to examine what type of creative things you bring into the world. And at the same time, you have this Uranus aspect that's going to be in the house of your higher mind. So expect some great inspiration. My God, write it down. If you wake up in the night, write it down, because this could be the beginning of what you've been working toward. So the two concluding thoughts here. Number one, take justice for yourself. When you observe the behavior that you're subjected to, usually by the people closest to you. If somebody else was in your situation and told you what was going on, how would you advise them? How would you tell them to take care of themselves, to honor themselves and to love themselves? So it's point number one, set your own policies, set your own guidelines for what's okay. Does it bring you peace? Does it bring you enrichment? Does it bring you growth? Whatever your parameters are, set them for yourself and adhere to them. Take justice for yourself like you would seek justice for others. The second part, you got dealt a hand. Everybody got dealt a hand. The world will tell you that your future depends on what hand you got dealt. Your spiritual path will tell you something different. Your spiritual path will tell you that it's not the hand that you got dealt, it's how you play that hand. It's what you do with what you have available to you. It's you keeping solid form despite what adversity comes your way. It's you holding true to who you are and what you are about, regardless of who tries to tell you differently, regardless of who tries to define you, 
regardless of who tries to tell you that you don't belong where you are, that you have no business where you're going, or tries to label you like you're evil, or like you're doing something bad, or like you're not safe to be around other people. Your path is your path. Your path is your path. There is great pain when the people who are closest to you don't seem to recognize that, and they mislabel you, and they judge you, and they're not seeking reconciliation. That's sometimes the hardest part. They're not seeking reconciliation. They're not seeking connection. You're the only one looking for that. Even when the evidence is very clear that that's the case, our attachment to what we think these people owe us, what we think these relationships are supposed to be like, what we're told we are supposed to be a part of, all of this supposed to, all of this idea, all of this, whatever is not clear is not clear. Whatever is not the reality is not the reality. Again, how you would seek justice for others, seek that justice, seek that peace for yourself.